So the second one is not multiple. Okay guys, so here's the goal for today. We are hopefully, but by the end of yesterday, it felt like most people were really good at telling the difference between definite proportions, multiple proportions, and evidence that supports neither. However, most of you said, I still don't really get what this has to do with the fact that matter is made of atoms. And my goal by the end of today is that you do make that connection. And it's a hard connection. And as I've said, we're spending a lot of time just to come to the conclusion that matter is going to atoms, considering you know that already. Um, but I think it's worth spending this time because I think this is a great example of the scientific process. In fact, we'll see this sort of circle in a second. I'm going to close the door and we'll start. So, someone was able to state in words what definite proportions was. Someone share with me. Um, Khalil, what did you say? Um, it's where you like have a chemical reaction, so all the ratios would be the same. Yeah, so the chemical reaction, the mass ratios between two elements are always the same. Good. So then, the second question was supposed to ask about multiple proportions. What's this mean? 
Keller. Mass ratio between two elements have the same. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. So that they'll be sort of they'll be simple multiples of each other, or they'll be mul or they will have the same factors, same multiples, exactly. Um, so you can sort of take this sentence and say the mass ratio is between two elements will be multiples of each other. And I guess, and then the last question starts to get at today's idea. Imagine that Dalton had done these chemical reactions and found out that neither definite proportions nor multiple proportions was true. If you were him, what might you have concluded at this point if you didn't get these kind of nice, pretty data graphs that, that show multiples? Are you what you concluded? I wouldn't really have proof that atoms exist. Why not? Because there's nothing to, there's no, <laughs> there's no connection? Yeah, there's no connection between the two. Great. And that, so that is the key idea, that if, this didn't, if things didn't work the way that these worked, there would be no proof that atoms exist. If, in fact, if anything, it might be evidence that they don't, because then you could get any amount of something combined with anything else. Remember, so like, one theory is that carbon is just yellow, mushy stuff, and hydrogen is just red, mushy stuff. So if that's the case, and you were getting any ratios, then basically what you're telling me is that any amounts of mushy stuff can combine and make something new. So I, I think that's a perfect way to put it. In fact, now we're gonna try this. And we're sort of doing something backwards from what you did on Tuesday. So remember on Tuesday, I gave you these molecule kits, and I had you make some molecules and then write down the mass of what was, came out of it. Dalton didn't get to do that. Unfortunately, he came around at a time before molecule kits. Uh, he was around before molecule kits because they didn't know about molecules, so it sort of uh, was too bad for him. But what, all he had was the data. So the question is, can you make the molecules that explain the data? So here's what we know. These are carbon. These are hydrogen. And Dalton ran some reactions. Actually, it was usually, he wasn't doing most of the reactions, his peers were. And got this data out. So what I'd like you to do is figure out the mass ratios, and then see if you think it would be easier to get those mass ratios using your molecule kits or using CLEV. Question? Are we going to be like dividing them? So you're going to be doing dividing, yes. And then, if you make them out of molecules, I want you to draw the molecules you made with C's for blue and black and H for white and green. If you made it out of clay, you can just draw what you made where one color would be C and one color would be H. So you, you, I'm not telling you to use the molecule kits. I'm not telling you to use the clay. I'm just asking you to find the ratios and see which you think would be easier to do to reconstruct that data. So you can now begin, and feel free to work with those at your table to figure that. Right, so, okay. so I did it, I did it, and it seems that they're all multiples of 12. Yeah, and I think maybe it'll be easier to use the clay. Because they're big, they're bigger numbers, and I don't want to. Well, I so imagine this was one C and one H. Yeah. So there are common multiples, that's one thing. So that must mean uh, there is multiple. Um, so it's one page three, it says now create the type draw. What is it? And keep working from there. See if you can make the first reaction. So, so what, do you, what do you think we should use? I said, I think it would be easier to make it.
Yeah. Great. So let's make them. So imagine the first one is just a C and an H. Okay? And you get a ratio of 12 to 1. What might the second one be? If you're getting a ratio of 6 to 1. Okay. What was the first one? So I'm the first one to see do you have a specific question or you just feel like this is a little confusing? Like I don't understand the scene. Yeah. Okay, so so what we're saying is that what we're saying is we're trying to make this data. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting is maybe this is the first molecule you made. It's a carbon and a hydrogen, and the ratio is 12 to one. So what? How could you make something that was a ratio of six to one. What would that molecule look like? Would you have to double the carbon? Would you have to double the hydrogen? Would you have to use three hydrogens? Yeah. You'd have to double the hydrogen. You guys agree, but both sound really unsure. Wait. Well, let's see. How much? I know to double it, but. So how many times more is the carbon, do you think, right now? If you're getting a ratio of 12 to 1, how many times heavier is this one? Dustin, how's it going? Make it. Uh, Question? Yes. I'm going to come to you guys. So, how would, if since we're doing play, how do you think we would hmm. like, put this together? Good question. Um, you tell me. Okay. So, why don't you assume that the yellow and the red weigh the same? Okay. So, how many more times, let's say yellow is carbon. How many times more yellow do you, would you need? Since they weigh the same? If they weigh the same, and you want a ratio of 12 to 1. Oh, so you need a yes. much bigger piece of this okay. than you would need of that. Okay. Yeah. Which is fine. Okay. So, so what do you need me? Why can't you need me? Okay, well, so, add more so you can start to go okay. to the yeah. Okay. Um, All right, so we'll, this is so much bigger, or I'll make this a little bit smaller so it's easier. Don't worry about the naming right now. All right. Um, so, and then, this is so now you want a ratio, the next one you got was what, 6 to 1? Yeah. Okay. So, see if you can uh, create so that out of, I guess, still your clay. So, Wait a second. Do you mean, do you mean like, so we take so you'd have to use half. a little bit of carbon, and then for this one you would use 12 pieces? Well, no, you're doing it right. So you were saying there's 12 times as much red as there is yellow. Yeah. So now you might want to use either twice the yellow or half the red, and then you should get six to one. All right. So keep doing what you're you're doing it right. You're just gonna have to, we're gonna have to see whether your data sort of supports what we need. Right. Yeah. All right. So you guys have done with the clay. Okay. Great.
Yeah, so that would be one C and two H, and see if you can work it from there. Okay, let's pause. I am so glad that this happened the way it did, and I did not expect this to happen the way that it did, but it happened exactly, I could not have planned this better, so um, half of you, literally half, which was, there's five groups, and two and a half groups chose to, cho to use the molecules, and two and a half groups chose to use clay. So now, we have done exactly what Dalton could do, which is that we've tried to explain the data two different ways. And in science, usually, you want the explanation that best explains the data. If you're not explaining the data, it doesn't work. So, I'm going to go with the molecule people first. Um, Georgia, can you tell me, so clay people, listen up, because you did not do this. You don't want to do it? Give it a try. Tell, tell me about what you did. We used the molecule. Okay, and what were some assumptions you made, or I helped you make? Um, when the... And I'm looking on page two, three now. I, we all agree that the mass ratios were 12, what was it, 12, 12 9, 6, 4, 12, 4, 12, 6, 4, 3. 3. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, well when the ratio was 6, okay. the hydrogen doubled. So, so what did you start with when the ratio was 12? Um, how many C's, how many uh, One C and one H. Okay. And then you said when the ratio was 6, maybe you just had twice as much H. Mm -hmm. So you made an assumption about the weight of the carbon piece compared to the weight of the hydrogen piece. What was that assumption that you made? How, much, how many times heavier was the carbon piece? Uh, if, if this creates yeah. a ratio of 12 to 1, what Georgia said is that this is 12 times heavier. And therefore, this would be 12 to 1, this is 12 to 2, or 6 to 1, this is 12 to 3, and this would be 12 to 4, or which is 3 to 1. So, makes sense. Georgia again was saying that, assume that this C was 12 times heavier than this H. If you had one of each, you'll get a 12 to 1 ratio. If you have one C and two H's, you'll get a 12 to 2 ratio, which is equal to 6 to 1. If you have one C and three H's, you get 12 to 3. If you get one C and four H's, you'll get 12 to four, which is three to one. So each of these sort of works out. So Georgia, so that entire group, Destin, Morgan, you guys are playing with the molecule kits. All right, I'm sort of buying this argument, but I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I buy it completely. So play people, show me what you made when you were trying to make a 12 to one ratio. Show me, show me the molecule that you made out of C H. Uh, like yeah, just so physically give it to me. You got it. We know we need a lot more C than H. Okay, perfect. So Michael's got one here. Now we're going to test this out. So if Michael's right, this should weigh 12 times as much as this. Wait, you said it's not exact? But this is exact. Yeah. So why shouldn't your data be exact? Because you're making a, like a guess. Oh. Okay, so hold on one second. So let's let's see if let's see how we did. And oh. so this was about eight point eight grams. And this is about Point five grams. So it was actually closer to 16 to 1. Not bad, but not exact. James, did you have a thought? Yeah, okay. So it was better the way that they did because oh. we um <laughs> we failed because we also had to we used like um it was based on like human error as well, because we might not make it like exactly, whereas they could make it more exact than we could. Whoa, so James James is saying, wait a second. Now I realize maybe this data was easier to explain 